All right, hi, welcome everyone to the cosplay photography panel. Uh, especially welcome to our panelists, uh, Joe and Kayla and Kelsey, who are very gifted photographers and who specifically are photographers in the cosplay community, <laughs> which I feel like a lot of times people overlook the photographers, like they look at the great images and give the cosplayers a lot of credit, but they don't really think about the person behind the camera and doing the editing after the fact and figure out how those images came to life. So we're gonna talk about that. Um, and so Dan, if you wanna play the little video to give a visual of what our amazing photographers are capable of. <laughs> Joe and Kayla, I think you're all here. Let me just look. Sorry, I'm both on my computer and on my phone because yesterday I had technical issues where my computer was lagging. So you'll have to forgive me while I get used to the setup. Um, so whichever of you three wants to go first, speak up, don't be shy. And um, I, if you could just introduce yourselves and talk about how long you've been doing photography and how long you've been doing cosplay photography because those are two different answers to the question. And then um, maybe give a little bit of your origin story and how you got into both photography and cosplay photography. So who wants to go first or should I, should I choose a volunteer? <laughs> um, I'll go first. Awesome. Uh, so I've been doing regular photography for about six years, um, cosplay photography for about three years. I got started in actually doing my senior photos. Um, I met the photographer and we really clicked and I was very interested in photography. So she took me on as her um, Padawan, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and um, then I did wedding photography and like senior portraits and stuff and um now I'm a little bit of everything but I recently got back into cosplay photography with Kelly and Crayley and that's been really fun um and I think is there anything else you want me to say Ke Kelly um if you want to talk about like why you were drawn to cosplay photography Oh, yeah. Um, so being a photographer, I really um, found it hard to do my own photos, which I now have my help of my mom. And I actually taught her how to use my camera, but um, I found that it was very difficult. And um, I just kind of wish I could be my own photographer. <laughs> so I thought, why not do that for other people who um, need a photographer and it's hard for them to get find a good one and you know um lend my abilities to them <laughs> makes sense thank you for that by the way yeah. <laughs> all right uh joe or kelsey either one uh i'll jump in um uh so many questions to start with uh sorry uh, so my name is Joe Arianis, and I was a professional photographer working in Atlanta, Georgia, huh. um, about seven years, uh, five of those, I was dealing with cosplay photography as well, um, went through the full gamut of wedding photography, style photography, events, oh lordy, you name it, I was doing it, um, and cosplay photography was where I could just be endlessly creative and really latch onto my nerdy side and just let it explode in the photos. And I had so much fun doing it. And I met so many amazing friends. I think 
technically I got oh man that's such a complicated origin story um I'm gonna I'm just gonna blame it all on Heroes Alliance which is a charity that has cosplayers that help um and not help but they go to events uh for special needs kids and schools and hospital visits and all of that and so I would wander around documenting the heroes brightening children's lives and stuff so that was always awesome and fun and so then I made friends with everyone and it just was endless at that point um uh, I actually started I, I, I was a photographer from a pretty young age. My dad did it professionally for a little while. And whenever he would have bigger events, he would take me along and hand me a spare camera and be like, just capture other things. Um, <laughs> the like most fond memory I have of that is when we went to the national, um, oh, I went blank. Uh, motorcycles going really fast in a straight line. Oh, motorcycle races? Yeah, but the drag races. Oh my gosh, there we go. The National yeah. Motorcycle Drag Racing Competition and photographing um, all of that and specifically following this one competitor that ended up getting like second or third that year. And it's just like, I was like, I'm hooked. This is fun. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's a lot self-taught, but then I ended up going to grad school for it because I'm crazy. <laughs> Aren't we all... I feel like I only get along with crazy people. So what does that say about me? <laughs> but uh, my life is more fun that way. All right, Kelsey, on to you. Yeah, so my uh, origin story is a little bit different um, in that like, I'm not a professional photographer outside of cosplay. That's sort of the main type of photography I do. Um, I've had exposure to it. When I was younger, like I did like a film photography class in high school, like you do, um, and then did like dabbled in digital photography in college and, and elsewhere, but it was usually like in the service of something else because I was a fine artist um, in undergrad and other things. So I was doing, um, so like I did a series where I was really interested in doing. Um, prints and illustrations of like movement and dance and you know especially if you're trying to like get mid-air like you know that's not a pose someone can hold so I was like leaning on photography to help me get like reference and do stuff and then like through print so um or for a little while I was like very into like miniature painting so like it, which like it's difficult to take good photos of that with like especially at that time like phone cam was really bad so like I would when I interacted with photography it was sort of like in service of like some other art for either like reference documentation or like documentation of that other like piece of artwork um rather than it kind of for its own sake as much um and then I, and then the sort of how I got into it as more of its own art form um, is actually like, it, it's very linked to cosplay in that um, for a while I didn't really ever attend conventions. I just worked them like as staff. And then I had some friends who were suddenly like, hey, let's, let's just go to this convention that's cropping up in, in a month for like a day and just actually go. I was like, oh no, what am I going to do with myself <laughs> while I'm there? And I was like, well, let me like throw together, and, and I just sort of had the idea to actually throw together a closet Jimmy Olsen cosplay. And I was like, well, if I'm going to, like, you have to have a camera. And I'd been thinking about buying a digital camera for a while at that point. And so it was like a good excuse. Um, and then I was like, and then that'll like give me something to do, like at the convention also. If I'm like, it's like if I'm not like running around with like a list of 5,000 things I need to do to make this event run, like what do you do at a convention? <laughs> like <laughs> what what does one even do? So it'll give me like something to like fall back on and like a way to interact with people when I'm feeling awkward. And it was just a ton of fun and it sort of like took off from there. Um, and I was started doing it for, for friends um, and I... It was really nice also because I'd done a lot of like fine art when I was younger, but then had some like repetitive stress stuff that meant I really like, couldn't do that anymore. Like I couldn't really draw 
um, in the way that I have when I was younger. And so it also was really nice because it gave me a way to be like visually creative and use some of those, the skills that of I that I'd sort of developed, but didn't kind of cause pain in the way that this other art form that I had been part of my life since I was a child. Um, it gave me a different way to use those skills that didn't sort of exacerbate that injury, which was really nice. So, um, so yeah, that's sort of how I got into it and what latched onto it for me. And it's collaborative. Like there's, I think, a joy in like the inherent collaboration of it because you're working like with the cosplayer in terms of what their vision is and what they want to capture. And so there's like a, a kind of inherently social element to cosplay photography um, that I find also just like really enjoyable. I agree. I, I love working with photographers that I gel with, which, I mean, Joe, I haven't worked with you, but obviously we gel. Oh, that's, that's not going to be a forever thing. I hope so. I was hoping <laughs> you say that. As soon as we're in the same state, when COVID is over. <laughs> um, but Kelsey and Kayla, I've had the pleasure and it's been fun. <laughs> um, so what are the tools of the trade? Here's where we can get as technical as you'd like. Uh, what are, what are, what's, what can't you live without? What do you, what do you cart around? My camera? <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, I prefer a portrait lens rather than like anything else, I guess. I think mine's a um, 50 millimeter. So, yeah. <laughs> um... That's tough for me. Um, yeah, at cons, I would have like my little all purpose lens and kind of just go for it when I'm on the floors or something like that. But then if I'm in studio, oh no, I need my lights, I need my backdrop, I need my camera. I will go crazy on the lens because, well, at the time I had a, a fairly large studio I was working out of, so I could back way up and have on a longer lens. So then like you're, you're compressing the depth of field and everything. And, uh, and also it was lofted. And so I'd go up to the loft and I'd be shooting straight down and no, nah, I would go crazy. Um, but <laughs> bare minimum, yeah, camera. Uh, the 50 millimeter prime lens was always gonna give me perfect little images, nice bokeh, and um, then uh, uh, I want a softbox light uh, and one other kick light for behind so your hair doesn't blend into things. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm pretty low gear as far as photography goes because a lot of it I'm doing like at conventions where like you're hacking up to be walking around on the floor all day with stuff and, and photography gear is heavy. Um, mm -hmm. but it also depends on the event. Um, like for, for big conventions where it's a crowded floor, I use a, um, I have a zoom lens just because you can't always get distance from people. Right. Like, so, um, I used to shoot with the 50 millimeter prime, but I just found it when I was shooting outdoors and I had a little bit more space to get from people, like it worked really well. But if there was ever like, I just saw someone on the con floor, I wanted to like stop for a photo. Um, I could get like nice portraits, but if I ever wanted to like capture kind of the whole cosplay or if there was like a group of people together, it just like didn't work. So I, I sort of switched to a zoom lens to give me a little bit more um, flexibility where of how much the lens would capture when I didn't have flexibility of space to like move in relation to the subject. Um, so that's kind of my, my go-to, which I don't always like how the photos kind of look as much as when I can use a, a sort of more dedicated lens, like a, a prime lens or whatever. But, um, you know, it's sort of, you have to work with <laughs> the sort of confines of the space. Um, but when, you know, I'm shooting at like Metropolis, for example. Um, for that, I, I actually have started carrying around like two cameras because then I don't have to switch out the lens. And I've got one that's sort of that zoom or the prime. And then I have actually one that's a telephoto lens because it's outdoors. And so, you know, or your panels at the tents. And so sometimes you're just like really far back and it gives you the ability to take photos um, 
you know, of the event in a more like, like candid documentary style sort of way um, that are really, really lovely. But like, I wouldn't bring that lens to like a convention unless I was taking photos like of a cosplay contest or something, you know? So, uh, but I don't bring lights or anything like that. I've just started getting into using off camera flash, but you know, your what you're carrying on your body is like at premium at a convention and I'm not confident enough with it yet for it to be inconsistent enough in my results with it yet for it to like be worth the extra <laughs> like accoutrement as it were um you know for the con floor but I will say like you know all the gear in the world like some of the best photos I've ever taken have legitimately been on my my cell phone so like I'm also a big believer of that like photographer adage of like the best camera is the one you have on you so I love that I love that and yeah it really is about the eye and in my experience the best photographers are the ones that can make at least the best cosplay photographers are the ones that can make a cosplay cosplayer feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. And all three of you can do that. <laughs> Again, Joe, I haven't worked with you, but I know you can do that. Yeah. <laughs> and I've seen your pictures and it's clear. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and so how do you, how do you three go about evoking, like you're translating, comic book characters, how you go about evoking the character and the scene that you're trying to evoke. Like sometimes I've seen all three of you kind of duplicated in ex exact scenes or how do you, how do you go about evoking different feelings? This is kind of a weird question, sorry. <laughs> um, well, I think being a cosplayer really helps. And um, if usually I do shoots like not on the con floor, but where we schedule it and things like that so I have time to like research characters and um, understand the motions of the characters and things like that and um, in being a cosplayer I can I can kind of show the my model or whoever it is I can show them the kind of pose I'm thinking and see if they kind of vibe with it and we can go from there where I can help them pose and things like that so I find yeah, being a cosplayer just really helps. <laughs> Which all three of you are cosplayers, so that does help. <laughs> yeah. um, my background's a little eclectic. Um, I actually have a degree in sequential art comic books. Um, and I specialized in inking specifically. And so when I first started with the cosplay photography not at the charity events um i was playing with light the same way i would try to ink my panels really stark black and whites contrast for motion and texture um and i would also pull out my troves of books and issues to reference like this vibe this mood this moment and there are times that I was completely recreating an image that one of the cosplayers brought to me or I'm like, this, this is like the moment. Ah. Um, and so uh, whenever I would photograph a Wonder Woman cosplayer, um, the posing and the stylization is always going to be so different than like Starfire or um, Captain Marvel slash Miss Marvel, whichever version you want to talk about. Um, and so knowing the character and feeling like you have your own like uh, reader subject relationship with that character, I feel really informs how you're going to take your photos and the compositions that you have in your head that you want to get out and alive. Yeah, for me, it's, it's similar um, in that I think the way I approach it um, is, uh, and especially not just when, like, I'm, like, framing the photo, but also, like, when I'm kind of coaching my model, is I think of, you know, 
the kind of photography I gravitate towards, like you can definitely take like your just nice portrait, like movie poster type photo, but the kinds of photos I, I like, I love when I have the opportunity to take the time to try to do are ones where it's like each photo is almost its own little story. Like you can look at it and you can see that there is, the character is taking an action or experiencing an emotion that is, that, that is conveying something like, oh, this character is really upset about something, or there's this, these people, these characters are um, having fun together, being fr like that you can, you see it and you, you can very immediately craft a story in your head about what's happening in that moment. And so for me, it's all about figuring out like, what is that like micro story that the cosplayer and I want to tell? And then kind of using both the, the framing of like how I'm handling the camera, but also like how I'm coaching the model um, to kind of get that across. And this is um, getting kind of into a thing later about like posing tips, but like the, so sorry, if this is like now off topic, but the thing that I would sort of recommend to pause players who are like, trying to figure out how to pose pose better, <laughs> you know, because there are different things. But the, the sort of thing I find that I have to coach the most is I think that a lot of cosplayers, when you're there, like, obviously you're just very concerned about, like, do I look good in this photo, right? But what that happens when I think there's that, like, concern is very, like, flat faces, like, neutral faces or very like static body movements, right? And I think what makes a photo compelling is when you can, is emotion and tension, right? Like, um, for example, like especially like action poses, I think this is really important. Like if you make a fist and you just hold it versus if you clench it, like you can see the way that muscle in my arm changed just by like, actually like clenching my fist versus holding it loosely so like if you're doing a punch you know or a block like grip the fist right and it just changes how your body like physically looks in a photo and you know so if you're doing like uh, an actually like your wonder woman blocking instead of just like kind of posing neutrally like grip your muscles and maybe like and make your face look intensely um like I was rewatching the original Wonder Woman and the scene where she's got the shield in No Man's Land, like she's not just standing and she and Gal Gadot's acting against nothing. Like there aren't actual bullets she's having to like resist the impact of, but she's embodying that and you see the tension in her musculature and her face and in her face, right? That it's difficult, that it's effortful. And she's not concerned about, oh, does my face look pretty in this moment? It's about conveying the effort of that motion um and so that would be sort of my recommendation is to be kind of less con do i look cool enough do i look pretty enough i mean obviously if you're doing more of a like model type shoot like that's different but if you're doing that kind of more action shots or storytelling shots like be less concerned with like does my face look okay and is my face conveying the emotion and action of the scene, because it'll just, it'll make your photos more engaging. Um, so yeah. And if you're working with another cosplayer, don't be afraid to like resist each other a little bit. Like there's a thing in, in like dance, partner dancing, where you want to have a little bit of like tension and resistance. So that way you can feel the other person's movements. Um, so like, you know, if you're doing like Captain America and Bucky with like Bucky punching the shield, like actually press into each other a little bit. Because once again, you can see this, I'm just holding my fist against my palm, but when I press, like, right, the body changes because of that tension. And obviously you don't want to, like, break props or, like, hurt each other, but just even that, like, little bit of, like, leaning into each other, like, changes the dynamic a lot. That was very long-winded. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, that, like, I'm learning stuff here, like, and quite honestly, it's not a good photo shoot unless your sore is I'll get out after. <laughs> Just about to say, also make sure you have water on the sidelines for everyone because hydration is important. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. 
And Kelsey, you, you were not getting off topic. I was already, once we started on this, I was thinking we should, let's skip ahead to advice on posing. So you kicked us off because that was really good advice. Um, so <laughs> Joe and Joe or Kayla, jump in, give some posing advice because I'm taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, so uh, again, eclectic background. I'm sorry, you guys, I'm a little nuts. Um, Don't be sorry, it's amazing. <laughs> I have a photo is good. <laughs> I have a background in theater and dance as well, and so for me, um, I think about the dynamics of the body and the form. Um, there's something called contrapposto, and essentially, like a static figure, you have shoulders straight line, hips straight line. That's really boring. As soon as you go dink. Oh, that's where dynamic shape and form come in for drawing, for motion, all of that. Like you have to have contrapposto. But then you're also butting up against people's confidence and self-assuredness. And oh my goodness, do cameras scare people? Huh. And so um, initially when I was starting out, like I was just like, just do this. And like I would actively pose and like show them and like minor adjustments to the body, but then the face would show fear or like lack of confidence. And I just be like, no, you look wonderful. And I don't know how to, uh. it wasn't until I started shooting boudoir and pinup and took a couple of workshops on like, how do you coach people to like, especially in those, because that's supremely vulnerable to the subject. And then uh, combining like breathing, like this is getting really abstract, I'm sorry. Combining breathing techniques. I also had a studio cat that was really super goofy. And so he would chill people out. Um, and just getting people to not think about themselves for a moment. And that's when you're capturing the photo. That as soon as like their shoulders drop and they're relaxed and then they can engage in the moment, like that's when you capture it. And there's all sorts of like minute things about posing that so I'm um, especially nowadays because of selfie culture oh boy um but just the <laughs> dynamics of like up versus down like let's see if I can like you don't want to duh, and so you coach to like have the chin out a little bit and shoulders back and down breathe so it's natural like you just it helps to talk people through it because if you're talking their mind can't focus on all the insecurities as much yeah and then give them a moment to be themselves. Um, Cause poses can wildly differ depending on what you're wanting or needing. Contrapposto is important. Um, you'll want, I'm gonna have to stand up for this. So you'll want like an open space for mm -hmm. negative space and then you'll want something closed off. And so like, eh, but that's like, just. oh my God, I'm so sorry. I ran over my cat's tail. Oh. Um, he's fine. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, you'll want to work with contrapposto, negative space versus closed form, and that all gets into the storytelling and keeping the person comfortable and breathing and hydrated. Yes. All right. What about you, Kayla? <laughs> um, so I like to start the posing before we even do the shoot, um, which sounds weird, but no, no, I, <laughs> I like to talk to my model beforehand and ask them to like put together a Pinterest board or give me some ideas. So they're already thinking about what they want to do and getting excited over it. Um, and then uh, if they need, want some help, I can help them just throw them poses and we can like geek out basically. <laughs> um, so that way they're already kind of relaxed with me at the beginning and looking forward to things they want to do and thinking about it. Um, and then when we are actually at the shoot, I like to talk to them and laugh with them and get them just to relax with me. And even when we're shooting, I still like to talk to them and um, for sure, just like complimenting them and things like that for things they're doing. And um, you would not believe the confidence that goes up once you start complimenting what they're <laughs> wearing. Um, so then when you add a little like 
constructive criticism, they're like, oh yeah, okay, let's do that. Because you already like made them feel good about themselves. So it's not like a huge um, weight on them to be a little adjusted a little, here and there. And um, again, refer having my phone with and we can reference poses and stuff and get excited together is a great thing. Um, I, I think I did with this with Kelly, but I would, if I wanted a certain emotion, I just like call out something really random, like think of puppies in the rainbow. And it'd be <laughs> so random, like you get a laugh or something and, or you, you just throw something super like weird and dark out there and they're like, what? And you get that nice little, um, like just reaction shot. Um, but I, I'm, I'm like, I, they know, like they know me well enough. I hope at that point to be like, um, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think just really like working with them and understanding the character, understanding the person and their movements and how they're able to move. Cause you might be with people who have like arthritis or um, anything like that. So you gotta be aware of their physical body and things like that. <laughs> I second the Pinterest board as like a really good technique um, to use to not just like it's useful because then like you don't have the this also leans into a different question that you had sort mm -hmm. of for us ahead of time Kelly about like how to get the most out of your photo shoot um, but I think in terms of like setting expectations and getting on the same page like uh doing kind of that collaborative pinterest board so like you both understand like what the tone of the shoot is that you're doing together but also then like you don't have afterwards like oh i really wanted to get that shot or like recreate this pose and like there was just so much going on my mind blanked and i forgot so it can give you like a, almost like a checklist like during the shoot to be like did we hit this did we hit this did we hit this um and so that's that's really um a technique I like to use as well to to make sure that that we're communicating about what we're wanting to accomplish in the shoot together. Um, I agree. I agree. Uh, what what else, Kelsey? That's a, I think this is a good time to segue into that. What else would you say for getting the most out of a photo shoot if you like pre schedule a photo shoot with a photographer? Yeah, I mean, I think first is like make sure to select a photographer whose style matches what you're going for, right? Like I mostly shoot like natural light. I don't do a lot of that kind of equipment. I do sometimes do special effects, but not always. But if you're wanting like a really dramatic, like chiaroscuro, like lighting reliant kind of moody shoot, or you want to do a nighttime shoot that really relies on that having that kind of equipment like i'm maybe not the photographer that you want to pick right and if you're that's what you're wanting and then you hire me you might be like setting yourself up for disappointment with the photos because what my photography style is doesn't match kind of what you want and that's not to say that like i'm a bad photographer it's just like there's a mismatch in terms of like the style you're looking for um and what, what my style is, because every photographer's style is different. So like make sure that for the kind of shoot you want, you're picking a photographer like ahead of time that's gonna, that that's in their wheelhouse and what they do. Or if it's not, that they're like excited about it. So, and so I think also communicating that, like using a Pinterest board or something, that if there's something specific you're wanting to get out of a shoot or the kinds of pictures you're wanting to take, that, that you communicate that to the photographer ahead of time. Like, is it you want to do a more model-esque, like I'm not looking to do like crazy action poses or whatever, but I really want some more nice, you know, uh, you know, more pinup style or boudoir style, you know, like that, that that's more what I'm looking for or fashion style versus like this was ripped from a panel of a comic book. Um, and just to communicate that, ahead of time so you're on the same page so like you're setting expectations beforehand um and all that communication is really clear i would also i would always recommend bringing a friend not just for like your own comfort but also like sometimes i as a photographer for like sight lines have found it really useful to be like hey friend go stand over there model like look at your friend and like imagine this emotion at them because then they have something to interact with 
visually and it's not just like look at this random tree but then i'll sometimes you can have a person to like hold bags like at a convention and it feels you know so which is also useful or like occasionally i've been like hold this light <laughs> um so bring a friend um and and just keep communication open with what you you're happy with with you're not happy with um those would sort of be my biggest pieces of advice is just to make sure you're always communicating and that you set expectations both like your expectations for the photographer but um you know so they but also to have them um yeah, just to make sure that you're you're open and communicating and setting clear expectations. That way you're not, nothing's a surprise, right? I agree. Uh, Joe or Kayla? Um, well, for me, from being the photographer, getting the most out of the shoot for the client, um, I want to, I usually do like kind of basic um, posing and stuff just to get them relaxed and comfortable. And then um, we'll look at the shoot, the pictures and the all that stuff and do that. And then once we're done with that, I'll show the client and things like that. And then um, once we're done with like everything that they wanted, I'll ask if there's anything else and maybe if they want more to look a little bit more at Pinterest or discuss things that they liked about like the comic or the movie. Um, and just to make sure we go like all kinds of locations. If I'm at like, I don't know if you, everyone has been to Seven Bridges in Wisconsin, but um, it's a really cool place with like woods and the beach and rock formations. So I like to do a variety of different um, backgrounds while also giving the model the like the highlight, but we get a little bit more um, immersive in the photo since we're at the location um and and like what kelsey said the other thing is if they bring a friend or if i have a assistant um it's another way to evoke emotions in them because you can be like look at them and then you tell them like make sure they laugh or make sure they're like what um which is super nice too, also for holding things. So, oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I would always have one concept. Um, it was, it would be decided on before uh, we would get to location, location being at a con, out in the world, in the studio. Um, and we would just work off the one concept the one panel, the one like uh, cinema uh, movie scene or something and just one concept. And so that would allow for recreation, portraiture, like all of that within that one moment they're really responding to. Um, and that would help focus in and we'd get really excited about the nitty gritty of like getting this one thing and then we could get distracted. We could go off on little visual tangents, tangents and be like, oh, this is a Catwoman shoot. Well, we did the thing with the whip, but then what about this? And like, you're really hot in your suit. Like, why don't you take that off now? Oh, if we hand you this thing, like suddenly you're in the jail cell and it's just endless and over and over and over. And you can, I feel that I like that spontaneity and adaptation on the spot while keeping it framed within one concept. Um, I am a huge proponent of you have someone extra for yourself as the photographer and your, your client slash subject always has one person for them. Because for me, it was a safety thing. Um, whether at con and especially out in the wilds of the world, it's a safety thing. Um, that safety first always for me with whoever and that's that gets pretty extreme whenever you have a spider-man cosplayer that is completely willing to drop down on a rope from your 20-foot ceiling <laughs> safety oh, is boy. important <laughs> um <laughs> i had that happen and it was definitely like all of us being like throw pillows under him oh my god let's just put the couch under there like don't die this is a really awesome photo was it Spider worth it <laughs> Spider-Man cosplayers do be like that, though. It's <laughs> <laughs> different. Um, but yeah, and so I, I tended to use like one of three people as my assistant or safety um, because they knew how I wanted my equipment handled. 
Um, and then like what you guys said that when the subject brings their own friend, partner, whatever, it's a comfort zone for them. They have their safety net as well. Um, and it's really funny on con floors that I would have uh, remote triggers on my external flash. I would just shove it in a friend's hand and be like, go over on that side and just hold it up above the crowd. And they'd be like, okay. And then you get this really dramatic lighting popping in from the side and then like scurry back over it. Everyone freezes on the con floor when they're like, why was there a flash of light? What was that? I did the, <laughs> did, no, those crazy people over there. Okay, it's fine. Um, <laughs> So yeah, safety first, uh, but in general note, I just come in with one concept and play, 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 play. Okay, I didn't put this on the list of questions, but I think it's really, really important. So a lot of people think that all you guys do is take pictures and then spend like five minutes editing them and then boom, they're done. Debunk that, debunk that. Tell. Talk about your post editing <laughs> process. Let, let's let's just get this on the record. This is being recorded. We're gonna we're gonna point to this. <laughs> well, so like first, there's. I mean, I'm one of those photographers that I I take like perhaps too many. I rely a bit too much on digital being able to just like you don't have film to where it's just as many photos, and then I have so many to go through. <laughs> um, and especially if like two are like almost the same and mm -hmm. you're like, you know, it's like a, a fist is like an inch higher in one and you're just like, which is better? And you're just like going back and forth between like two almost identical photos. It can take a very long time. And that's <laughs> just before editing. That, that's just like, I took 500 photos of you. Let me whittle this down to 20 for you to pick from, right? Like. And that just can take, sometimes it's really obvious. Like it's like, oh, I want these ones. And sometimes that's like a very agonizing process for, and sometimes it's agonizing because they're all really good, right? <laughs> like, so it's not necessarily agonizing because like the photos are bad. Like it could be the, it could be a good kind of agonizing. Um, so like there's that piece. And then for editing, like some, it depends, like I've spent, there are some that are just like really easy edits. There's not like the light was really good on the day. Like the cosplay didn't have a lot of like dust. Like there weren't a lot of flyaway hairs and it's pretty simple. Um, and there are others that it's like tens of hours, like that have like, you know, over 20 hours to edit a photo because either there's um, something with the cosplay that needs to be adjusted. I had one, one that took forever because the cosplayer had a lace front and I didn't, notice on the day because there was just so much else going on but then it had like flipped up the widow's peak had flipped up in the front and i was just like i can't it's gonna feel gross to me to deliver this so i had to like photoshop in a new hairline for like all their photos and it just i was like kicking myself the whole time like how did i like i was noticing so much else like how did i not notice this wig issue on the day um and it just made editing that take because I was having to re and I was new to editing. So it took me longer also because I'd never tried to do anything like that before. So there's lots of like Googling, like how to use clone stamp. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you learn a lot from fixing your own mistakes. Like you can follow all the Photoshop tutorials for stock photos you want, but there's nothing that teaches you quite like I effed up a thing on the day and need to fix it in post. So, um, yeah, so that like shoot took an extreme, it was just like five photos and it took forever to edit. Like, yeah, like over, over 20 hours easily. Um, it was, it was a whole thing. So, yeah. And that wasn't even like an, an effect shoot in terms of like background replacement, which can also take a very long time because you're cutting. That was just like a cosmetic edit. It just took a while. So it varies. Um, <laughs> um, it's kind of funny talking about the wig. I That's a big thing for me because when I'm doing shoots, like I'm the model, I it's so annoying because I know my friend does it. And I know he's not very detail oriented. So it's like, I have to make sure I look good. And sometimes if I miss it, it's gone. So like when I'm shooting, I want to double, double check 
everything because I'm like, well, what if I did this and then I had to do that? Um, and so, yeah, again, <laughs> just like being a cosplayer and stuff, I'm kind of a perfectionist. So, <laughs> um, but with editing, yeah, like the same thing as Kelsey, I take a lot of photos and I have to weed through a lot of photos. <laughs> um, and then um, when I'm in Photoshop, I actually have a certificate in photography and um, a little bit of knowledge in graphic design. So I love Photoshop, that's like my favorite part. So I love to play with it and not just do like one edit. Sometimes I like to see how it looks with other lighting and things like that and um, bringing out the subject and making or making the background blurrier or making it darker. Um, I also like using special effects, but not too much. <laughs> um, and, and if there's like a certain photo my subject really likes and they want me to do a little more, I will take it onto my iPad and actually like um, perfect it where I'm painting the face and um, things like that, where it's just like, this looks like a painting, but it's actually not because I've been, yeah, it's just a whole process. So <laughs> a lot of, lot of work in that. The detail thing is is another good reason to bring a friend because I think, you know, sometimes is the, I know I have this issue in talking about detail, but it's like, you know, as a photographer, if you're like thinking about lighting and posing or whatever, that sometimes the small costume details can get overlooked because you're trying to pay attention to so much. So having a friend there who like their only job is to like, make sure I don't have lint on my costume, make sure nothing's flipped up weirdly, double check my hair to just like, you know, my makeup or whatever, like to be that person for you is also like, if that's a thing you're concerned about as a cosplayer, it's another, another good reason to bring, to bring a friend. For sure. <laughs> um, yeah, I, huh, I have done cosplay photography on film before. I love it. I love film photography. Like I really, and I could ramble about that by itself for an hour, but um, it, for kind of a tangent, a little bit of like, I guess a pet peeve, but straight out of camera does not exist. And people need to let that nonsense go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it does not exist. Stop doing it. It's, it's just offensive because even if you go back to film photography, the origins of photography or anything like that nothing is straight out of a camera there's the chemical process and the science behind the light reacting to the film based on the settings the physical settings of tick ticking and on your camera that make choices for you and then you have a whole new set of choices that happen when you develop the film 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 whatever film you've shot on choices get made with how you develop that film in what chemicals and for how long and then you have more choices to make when you go in the dark room to finish your image all of that still applies digitally it does from the simple fact of like on your phone excuse me you go up and down left and right whenever you're like i want focus here brighter do this you're still making choices straight out of camera doesn't exist please let that concept go also I personally love Lightroom, Adobe Lightroom. I am not plugging them because I kind of actually don't like Adobe and I hate that I am a slave to them. And <laughs> just, crap, I have to pay you money because these are the programs I'm good at. Um, but <laughs> for the first couple of years, three years, you know, like two years of me being a professional photographer, I was doing everything in Photoshop, shoot me in the face when it comes to weddings because uh, and then someone was like, you need to learn Lightroom. Why aren't you doing that? Oh my Lord, Lightroom is amazing. But guess what? I still spend more than five minutes in Lightroom just deciding on what photos to finish editing. Mm -hmm. um, you can do a lot of post-processing um, in Lightroom, but then I always finish out anything in Photoshop, whether it's just the portraiture, because you can get detailed on correcting hair skin tone, all of that, then if it's high-end fashion, portrait, like, anyways, finish off in, in uh, Photoshop. So at minimum, 
spending 15 minutes on a finished image and that's really fast like the, the only reason i say that number is because for a while i worked as like a corporate photographer and i was told do not spend more than 15 minutes we're not paying you more okay uh, i shall be your slave and make the photos pretty in 10 minutes or less um not my <laughs> best work but whatever um but then some of the more advanced photo composite edits I would spend weeks on just tweaking and fixing and like this like little starburst needs to be moved over and leave it alone come back mm, okay this light needs to be a little balanced here push the contrast here like for the more like special effects heavy things 24 36 hours total over weeks of like working leave it alone working leave it alone just like you do with a painting like a full-on yeah. oil painting will take you months to do that kind of dedication goes into some of the cosplay photography um like there's it it's i'm still like a little annoyed at this image that i did though i love it it's one of the wonder woman ones i did and I loved how she looked in it. And I loved the emotion. I loved the pose. And like, she has the lasso like coming around her arm. And so it's just accentuating her muscle, but she's not like muscle bound. And I was like, I didn't pay attention. And the top of my backdrop is cutting through her head. And her hair is blowing because I had a wind machine on her. And so it's all like, whoosh. And I'm like, how do I save this? There's no way. Oh, I did. It's on, it's on like my little, the preview thingy. And then, so I finally fixed her head and I was like, but I want her lasso to glow, but I don't want it to be too much because it's all right at her face. Like I spent an obnoxious amount of time making that photo look right because I'm stubborn sometimes. That's a mood. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, there, there have definitely been times where it's like, they, they will not, like they won't notice but all notice. <laughs> like, yeah. And so, yeah. 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 So a lot of time, like that, like dumb amount, I'm going to say that one was like 30 hours worth of work. And you look at it and you're like, oh, that's a nice little portrait with this subtle effect going across it. Uh, my life. <laughs> but I still love the photo. <laughs> Just so much work. I edited a bunch of cars out of a background of a photo I took at a con because like I took it in a parking garage because like the industrial like but like it was just the it was a, a good set for kind of what I wanted um or is like close to uh to that kind of set because it was um doing Star Wars and like the kind of imperial interiors that are very gray and long and I was like well the closest I can get to that that's not gonna have 5,000 people walking through all the time is a parking garage and so that's where we took it and then, like, the amount of time, like, editing cars out of the background of it was just, you know, a lot. <laughs> I want to cry, and I don't even do that much of stuff. Um, and we, are, we only have a few minutes left, so I just wanted to thank all three of you for taking time out of your Sunday. Uh, seriously, I've learned a lot about posing. I took some notes. <laughs> um, I learned posing from the very first cosplay photographer who I worked with and he was like okay you dumbass no he didn't call me dumb. <laughs> very, nice. very nice very complimentary but um, picture an older man or a man older than me he's not old but um, just like literally physically showing me how to pose like a woman because I don't know how <laughs> And people, people will take pictures of him while he's doing group photo shoots, showing women how to pose sexy. And he's like, people need to stop taking pictures of me like that. I'm like, I know, I feel bad, Mark, because he <laughs> he like literally showed me how, to, physically showed me how to hold my body, and that's how I learned. Because I don't know what to do. I was an awkward turtle. I'm still an awkward turtle, but <laughs> he made me a little less awkward. Because <laughs> that's the magic of collaborating with photographers who know their shit. I, I shouldn't be spending this thing on the show. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, thank you, Joe and Kelsey and Kayla. You guys are amazing. Uh, I really appreciate, really appreciated hearing everything. Like, like I said, this is going on YouTube, and now you can. Once it goes on YouTube, you can point this to anyone who's like, "Why do you charge for your photography?" You can be like, "This is why. <laughs> this is why." 
because there's yeah. there's the very basic calculation of equipment time and then uh, uh wow i had the formula in my head equipment time and then uh, expertise yes Means anyone is it's not free none of it's free good lord like one one lens one lens that i have is uh twelve hundred dollars like <gasps> oh my word don't come at me oh I, let me have payday the, the final button i want to put on this because we were just talking about editing is um sort of like a plea to cosplayers is that when you when you ask a photographer to take photos and they deliver them to you and you're posting them online do please don't add a filter to it Please, oh please just don't. Yeah. Like, we were just like, you know, discussing all of like the decisions like that photographers made and like ours about like color balance and contrast. And there's nothing worse than when the feeling of when you've spent all this time getting that look and then you see that your clients posted it and slapped a filter on it that changes that. Um, or like done a weird like edit to it that changes it. And then it's also that it's your name attached to it and people think you made those choices when you didn't. Um, but it just, if you don't like the way an edit has happened and you want it different, like talk to the photographer, don't, please don't, please don't slap an Instagram filter. Yeah. And <laughs> don't, don't remove the watermark. Yes. Don't do that. Don't. If don't I see so you stuff. doing that, I will physically hunt you down and beat you. Yeah. <laughs> and also, <laughs> also when you post these pictures, if you can tag them in a link when you post it so they can click on it and go right to the photographer's page. Yeah. Yes, please. That'd be nice. And It'd be so lovely. And you guys, your, um, your Instagram pages are listed in that little video at the start. So if anyone wants to follow you and they should, because you're all good, they can, they absolutely should. So thank you again. Um, and, I don't have the schedule in front of me, so I don't know what the next panel is. Dan, are you here? Uh, let me look. I, I have the schedule. I can take a look. Thank, thank you, Kelly, for everything. Yes, yeah. thank you, Kelly. Yes, hey, thank Kelly, you. Everyone. Thank you, three. This was really fun. Kelly, I'm here. Uh, actually, it's supposed to be Elliot, Megan, and Kenny's supposed to be moderating. I don't see either one of them here. Oh, no. Okay. You guys, want to go, you guys want to go a little bit farther and I can let you know if they come in. Okay, yeah. Um, the one question we didn't get to is funny photo shoot stories. Who has a funny story? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Just, right, I, so. I, I kind of mentioned him earlier, but at my studio in Atlanta, we had a cat named Bendito de Diablo. Yes. He was our studio cat. It, he was a riot. He was this chunky, active, funny, talkative tuxedo cat that just loved everyone, thought he was a dog. It was amazing. Um, we had 20 foot ceilings in, in the studio in like the main section. And when we needed to change out the backdrops, we'd have to pop out this ladder, climb up it, like switch out the paper rolls. This like one day, I, I think I was traveling out of the state on a job. And one of my other studio mates texts me just a picture of him on the top of the ladder being like, what do I do about him? He won't come down. I was like, shake the trees. <laughs> really? Shake the trees. Brr, it comes clamoring down. He was always a riot. But then the best thing was with really nervous people, they would be like, okay, where do I stand? Like, what do I do? And I would look around and be like, see the cat? Stand where the cat is. He knows light. He loves light. He loves getting his picture taken. Just follow the cat's lead. And they're like, really? Yes, really. <laughs> Every time he would know exactly where the light was and just be like, <laughs> oh. So he was endless joy to have in the studio and slice the tension, all that. He was the best. I love um, him already. <laughs> I expect right. pictures in my inbox after this panel is done. Hey, I don't mean to interrupt, but Kenny's writing on the page and needs the link. I'm sending it to him now. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, well, this isn't quite cosplay, but I went to Ireland and was doing photos and um, I found myself not caring about the environment 
what that I was in, I was more focused on taking the photo and I would find myself like falling off the sidewalk towards the road and my friend would have to catch me or I'd like lay down on the ground and be like upside down taking the picture and everyone's like what are you doing and I'm like just leave me alone or um, we were on a tour and I'd be taking pictures and every, the whole group would be gone by the time I was done and literally the person who was in charge had to come walking back and grab me and take me back I almost missed the bus to our part our hotels and it's just like things like that where you're so into what you're doing that you can forget about everything else. <laughs> yeah, if I die few, taking this picture, so be it. <laughs> I've had a few like people where like the friend like is taking a picture of me taking the picture and there's one of me that is just like, yep, yeah, that's what that is. Where I'm taking a photo of a Doctor Strange cosplayer and I'm like literally lying on the ground on my back, like up at them, like in the dirt. <laughs> like just very um, you know, gotta do to get the shot. And it's just like kind of hilarious. Like, yep, yeah, so glamorous, the life of a cosplay yeah. photographer. Oh, yeah. I take pictures Climbing of trees, of dangling off like balconies, <laughs> being upside down. Yep. If I'm not sore by the end of it because of like the crazy positions I'm in, it hasn't been a good shoot. <laughs> oh, what am I like saying? Everyone has to be sore by the end of the shoot or else, no. <laughs> Kelly, uh, we have uh, Kenny in the chat right now. Wonderful. Hi, Kenny. All right. Well, thank you again, Kayla, mm. Kelsey, and Joe. This was wonderful. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks. <laughs>